Hi, Christopher here, and it has been a while, hasn't it? Uh, I hope you've been well. Um, you might be wondering what I'm doing on your screen right now after all this time. Well, I had a New Year's resolution, and that New Year's resolution was to resurrect this channel from the dead. So why resurrect this channel? Well, I want to make a game and I want to take you all along for the ride with me. So that means from design right through to the end. So we're going to do art, we're going to do uh, sound design, coding, all of it. And then right up until the end where I get this game on Steam and release it and publish it and I get nasty comments. I want you to see the whole process from start through to finish. So what is this game about? Well, I guess the video title probably gives it away, uh, but it's Victorian horror, woo! Uh, so this is like one of my favorite eras ever. I'm just in love with the aesthetic of this overall. Uh, I love the dark alleys, I love the fashion of the time, um, the, the weapons, everything. Like every time there's a sh new show on Netflix that is like a Victorian era sort of themed or a new game or something like that, I basically have to play it. I'm just a sucker for this period. So I wanna make a horror game in this era. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Christopher Yabsley and I am an independent game developer. Uh, I used to be on this YouTube channel and I used to make pixel art tutorials and that was quite a while ago. Uh, but since then I went on to have a career in uh, game development so I didn't have a lot of time left for this channel overall. Uh, I went on to release a game called Dungeon League uh, which is what my pixel art background kind of fell into and then I basically transferred across to the horror space. So in more recent times I made a game called Pigsaw uh, which is a game where you are a human and you're in a human abattoir and you're running around these halls naked getting chased by giant pig butchers with saws for hands. It's all very dramatic and scary. Yeah. I also made a game called The Fruit as part of the DreadX collection, The Hunt. In this game, you're trying to find out what happened to your loved one in a rural country town. Uh, it's set in the late 1800s and it features a Springfield trapdoor rifle. And you have to manually reload the whole thing from start to finish. So that means not just pressing one button to reload, it means you've got to flip up the trapdoor to eject the uh, empty casing, put a new bullet and then slam down the trapdoor and then hopefully bring up your rifle in time to shoot the bad guy who's running at you with an axe. So. Okay, so when it comes to designing a video game, the first thing you want to do is basically put together something called a game design document, otherwise known as a GDD. Now, this helps in clarifying what it is you actually want to make because, you know, you can get started, you can get stuck in and just start trying to make a game, but you'll kind of wander around a bit and you might get stuck and you might lose direction and the game that you end up finishing might not be the game that you started with, which is fine sometimes. For the design process, I love to use a program called Milanote. Now, I used to be very eclectic with the way that I kept my notes and uh, kept track of my designs, but this allows me to keep it all in one space. So I can put my pictures in there, I can put notes, to-do lists, uh, I can draw arrows, like it's it's just got everything. It is a paid program, unfortunately, uh, but I do highly recommend it if you're a designer. Now, when first designing a new video game, I like to come up with something called design pillars. Now, these are the things that I think are most important about my video game and why it would be appealing to anyone. Now, these can help with really clarifying what it is you're trying to make and also not stray too far when, you know, development goes down the line because that can happen very easily. So I have three design pillars that I'm going to go through now. And these are the things that I think are just the most important aspects of this game. Atmospheric horror. Rain on cobblestone, ominous fog, distant screams, an ever-present feeling that something is lurking around every corner. So I really wanted to narrow in on this because games can be scary for a lot of different reasons. Maybe it's the monsters, maybe it's the gore, maybe it's a psychological thriller. It depends, but I really want to go for these ambient scares. I want you to be on edge at all times. So you don't know what's down this alley, you don't know what's hiding in those ruins, and the overall atmosphere will contribute to the player scaring themselves. Pillar number two, visceral weighty combat. Fight against smart and terrifying enemies with a limited arsenal. So I have a very particular goal for how I want my combat to feel, and I mention the word visceral and weighty, because I want it to be slow and deliberate. I don't want you to feel too strong as the player at any one time. I also want to make sure your arsenal is limited at all times, so you never feel quite strong enough to take on anything that you come across. And the third and final pillar, 
exploration. Explore a dark city and uncover the cosmic horrors within. I want exploration to be a key part of my game. I want it to feel good to explore the city. When you go down a dark alley, I want you to wonder what's at the end of it. I want exploring the ruins and the buildings and this old architecture to feel really good and really solid. I want the city to be a character in itself. And I want these cosmic horror elements to just be creeping in at all times. It has been three days since I washed up on this cursed island. I have barely eaten, and sleep does not come easy. My old crew cannot be trusted. Yesterday I beat in Master Thompson's head with a lead pipe. Something wasn't right with him. Something isn't right with all of them. But they are not what I fear most. This twisted city hides something much darker. Something beyond understanding. Something man was never meant to find. Now that was something I'd like to call a narrative resonance. Now that's not a technical term, I just made that up. Uh, but I used to be a screen composer and what I used to do with directors when I first started working with them is I would create something called a resonance. And it was just a little mood. I'd be like, I'd write a piece of music and go, is this fitting the theme? Is this what we're trying to do? Now that's what I was trying to do with that writing there. I just was like, just write down a paragraph that just captures the mood of what you're trying to do here. Now, I think this is a really smart way to go about it. You shouldn't try and write your entire narrative all at once, especially when you haven't made concrete decisions about mechanics, weapons, enemies, all these sorts of things, because these should be sewed into your narrative, and your narrative and your gameplay is going to be much stronger for it. Now, I do have a narrative foundation that I want to work from, and that is that you're a sailor upon an exploration vessel in a particular stormy night you get washed overboard and left for dead. Now a week later you wash up on the shores of an island and upon this island is this cursed city. A place that you really don't want to be. Something that is inhabited by something cosmic, something unknown, something beyond human comprehension. Now unfortunately for your crewmates, they landed here just a few days after you were washed out to sea. So your job is going to be picking up the pieces, finding out what's going on on this island, finding out what happened to your crewmates, and perhaps even killing a few of them on the way. When designing a video game, it can be really helpful to reference other video games, so you have an understanding, a basis of what it is you're trying to capture and put into your own game. So the first game I want to reference here is Condemned. Now, I loved this game for a long time. I played it back when it first came out on the 360, and I've played it periodically since. Now, there's two things that I really love about Condemned. Now, the first one is just the gritty combat feel. First-person combat has never felt as good as this game, in my opinion. Now, the second thing that I really want to capture from this game is its sense of scope. Now, Condemned is a really tight experience. It understands from start to finish what it's trying to be, and it uses its mechanics to full effect. And I want to put that into my own game. Now, the second game that I want to reference here is called Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. Now, this game is a hard recommend to play because it's a real bucky mess, unfortunately. But what is there and what is working is really good. In particular, I really love the environments in this game. It's set in the same period that I want to work within, and I think I can pull a lot and put that into my own game. Now, the second thing that I really want to reference here is the fact that this is a Lovecraftian story. So it's based off Shadow Over Innsmouth, and I want to include cosmic horror elements in my own game. So this is a really good reference point. Now the third and final game that I want to reference here is called Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl. Now I was really late to the party on this game, I only played it about four years ago, but when I did, oh boy, it just blew my mind. It's one of my favorite games ever. Now what this game has is atmospheric horror in Trumps. I don't think any game has done that better than this game. It just seems to be constantly under your skin at all times, especially the labs and the underground locations are just terrifying for really organic reasons as well the scariest moments in this game are unscripted now i want to capture some of that in my own game so i want to use their sort of patrol system and sort of randomization elements so that your playthrough won't look like my, my playthrough and i think that's a really great way to keep players on edge 
Now, thank you for watching this. This is something totally new. I obviously have never done something like this on this channel before, and I haven't done anything on this channel in a while, let's be honest. Um, as you can see, you know, I've got a brand new setup and everything, so I really like this is something that I want to do this year. This is something that I'm really passionate about, and I hope you can follow me along on this journey. If you're someone that followed me back when these pixel art tutorials first came about, thank you for sticking around. I know this channel has been dead for aeons, uh, but yeah, it's time to bring it back, and I really hope you enjoy this journey with me.